This is Matthew Hall at Bromley Emergency Courses and as part of our series of short revision tutorials focusing on the FRKM primary exam I want to spend a few minutes talking about the circulatory changes in pregnancy. Now while the physiological changes in pregnancy don't have a specific entry in the RKM basic sciences curriculum they did cop up as fairly frequent questions in the MRKM Part A exam and so we can expect to see them also in the primary going forward. The circulatory changes in pregnancy are all about oxygen consumption. Oxygen consumption of the pregnant woman rises 20 to 30 percent from conception to term and it's predictably proportionate to fetal growth. The physiological response is a sustained upregulation of organ function arising partly from the homeostatic responses to increased oxygen demand but also from the endocrine effects of the pregnancy hormones themselves. Cardiac output increases to around 8 to 9 litres per minute by term. That's a whopping increase of anything from 30 to up to 50% in some pregnant women. And that increase is achieved by a 30 to 40% increase in stroke volume and a lesser increase in heart rate, maybe 10% equivalent to 10 to 15 beats per minute. Plasma volume also rises significantly around 40 to 50 percent by 32 to 34 weeks and this is largely a result of upregulation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Changes in peripheral vasculature predominantly vasodilatation caused by the pregnancy hormones help to accommodate this increased plasma volume. This vasodilatation involves peripheral vasodilatation increasing blood flow to the major organ beds and also venous pooling elsewhere in the body. And overall, systemic vascular resistance will fall by about 20-30% to 30 by the mid-second trimester. The net effect of these cardiovascular changes, though, on blood pressure is that blood pressure should not rise during a healthy pregnancy. And in fact, tends to dip slightly, maybe 10-15 millimetres of mercury in the second to third trimester. This means that elevated blood pressure during pregnancy is almost always pathological and should be taken seriously as a sign of eclampsia or pre-eclampsia. Remember also that in the supine position particularly, the gravid uterus will rest on and may compress the inferior vena cava, restricting cardiac preload and causing the supine hypertensive syndrome of pregnancy. Of course, we can either roll the patient onto the left lateral side or just ask the patient to roll themselves to remove that compression. Heavily gravid women may also have some degree of aortic compression in the supine position, which in particular may compromise blood flow to the uterus itself. Together with the increase in plasma volume, the red cell mass also increases, probably around 20 to 30% through increased release of hematopoietin. But the increase in red cell mass is not sufficient to compensate for the very large increase in plasma volume. And in fact, the hematocrit overall drops, creating what's called a relative anemia or a physiological anemia. And it's called the relative or physiological anemia of pregnancy, typically causing a 1 to 2 gram per litre drop in measured hemoglobin level. Such significant changes in circulatory function during pregnancy can be expected to be reflected in the cardiovascular examination of the pregnant woman. Typically, the resting heart rate is increased by 10 to 15 beats per minute. The increase in cardiac output, the increased cardiac output often causes systolic flow murmurs to be heard. And also, it is not uncommon to hear a third heart sound present from the second trimester onwards. We must remember, though, that other murmurs and a fourth heart sound are not normal in pregnancy and remain signs of cardiovascular dysfunction. And in some women, a bounding or collapsing pulse may be felt due to the peripheral or the degree of peripheral vasodilatation. Less recognised are the changes of pregnancy on the resting ECG. The gravid uterus pushes upward on the diaphragm, pushing the heart upwards and to the left. And this is reflected often in left axis deviation on the ECG in later pregnancy. It may also cause inferior Q waves, and even in some cases T wave inversion, particularly in the inferior leads. Ectopic beats are also more common during pregnancy.